getting off of probation is number one priority. Number two priority is ensuring that we have fiscal stability in that campus. We're looking at a $29,850,000 cumulative deficit over the next three and a half years. Three, we need to ensure that we can do whatever we can not to cut any more classes. There's not a week that goes by that, that I, I get a call from three or four parents, grandparents, nephews, I mean, asking me, what can we do to stop cutting these classes? So there's, a, there's an equation between finance and cutting classes. The college said to the ACCJC that it was there, that they were cognizant, it was on the top of page 58, that they would not exceed 80% of their budget on labor and benefits. <clears throat> Between the time that that statement came out and now we're at 89 and change, we're close to 90%. Within two years, we'll be at over a little bit over 100%. So, so for every dollar we're bringing in, we're spending a dollar or two. Can't happen. We need a real strong reserve. <clears throat> we need to all sit down, roll up our sleeves. We need to sit down with all three of the uh, groups on out there, the, the CTA and, 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 and the CSEA and the AFT. We need to roll up our, 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 our sleeves, I mean, really get down the table and say, okay, if we're not going to cut classes, what are we going to cut? And, and, and as I've said, and some people don't like this, you need to be able to sit down at the table like I'm looking at you, Giles, and saying, okay, let's look at each other in the eye. Is this about students or is this about, is this about money? Because ultimately, we're all in this together. Remember, we've got $29,850,000 deficit we got to take care of. And, 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 and the school's already cut $12 million. So, I mean, it's not like the administration hasn't cut. But if you've been in private sector business long enough, you understand that sometimes you cut, and then you have to cut, and you have to cut. I can't live the same way I did in 2005 when the real estate industry was doing well and, and Bradco has closed on a deal every single day. You just can't do it. So, so we have to learn to live within our means, and, and I think that's very tough. I will say this, that, that, that I'm a job creator. Okay, I'm proud that the Bradco companies and the other companies that we've been involved with and our associates over the course of 24 years, we've created about 10,000 jobs. You know, we lease a building, we sell a building. Uh, so, but there, there, there are some at the college that, that think I'm a, a job terminator, that I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut and cut and cut and cut. Uh, that's probably why the, 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 the unions aren't supporting my campaign. I haven't asked for their support. What I've asked them to do is to, is, is to sit down and let's have an honest dialogue and not talk about this. We have to deal with this. If we don't get the financial issues of Victor Valley College done, Victor Valley College is not going to be here. And that's, I think, more paramount than the accreditation issue. Our board needs to be strong in its conviction. Uh, we need to, 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 to attract the right leaders at all levels within the college. Um, and we need to stay out of the politics that come with it. I mean, all the, all the different groups out there want to have their own person in there and they've interviewed. And, you know, this is, this is a business. This is a business about taking care of, you know, 12,000 students and, and, and uh, you know, a $60 million budget. And uh, so there's been a lot of turnover. And, it, and it's really a shame because the industry knows it. This is not something that's new. The industry knows that VVC's had a big turnover. The staff has come together. Um, I had a hard time. Uh, from a professional standpoint, um, uh, witnessing the fact that we had to pay some of our staff members extra money to do a job that I felt that they were paid for. Um, I know that there are those in the educational sector that believe that, that they have certain, uh, I don't know if you call it a moral responsibility to do certain things versus, well, my contract says I can't do contract says that. I was born and raised it, that my boss would say you get the job done. And there was no written, there was a kind of an, you know, in and out. Before I went out to pull my papers, I had heard from people that, that went to school or, or professors or whatever that, that there was, that, that they had a low campus climate feeling out there. Um, and when I got out there, I, I, I could kind of tell you, you have three, you have, you have three different groups, then you have the students. Um, everybody has, everybody has a territory. Uh, in March of, I was appointed on February 1st read my accreditation uh, file four or five times, really kind of get a, a, a true understanding, went to some of the meetings in the mid part of March. They came in March 14th to 17th. I could definitely feel the lack of trust by some of the groups at the college towards other members of the college. And as you really delved into it, part of it was deeply rooted. Sometimes you need to say to somebody, you know, Giles, get over it, okay? I think, though, by human nature, I mean, my wife Deb will say to me, Joe, get over it.
Well, that's easier said than done. I, I'm, I'm, I'm half German and half Irish, and I don't forget. So I, I think that what's happened is, is there's been a couple campus meetings to vet. I think if, if this were a private institution, and it's not, so I have to think differently. If it were a private institution, we would probably have a monthly vetting session. And eventually, we are going to vet it so much that we're going to beat this dog to death, and we're going to get all the issues on the table. And we're going to say to each other, one, we, you know, we, we need to figure out a way to respect each other. The challenge is you can't say to somebody to respect me. Respect is something that's earned. Um, uh, I recently attended a meeting where, where I didn't feel that I was as well received as I probably could have been. Um, part of that was a respect issue. It wasn't lack of respect on my part, or really lack of respect on their part. I think it was a fact that, that, that there needed to be mutual respect, and, and, and respect has to be earned. I think that everybody's trying. Uh, I think everybody's trying a lot harder now to 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 at least realize that we may have our differences, but that we do need to, to truly respect each other, and, and and we have to work together. We have no choice. We have some some great people in finance. Uh, we have some great senior leaders at at, at the college. Um, they know my feeling about cutting classes versus all of us sitting down and saying, okay, what do we do for the best interest of the student? There are those that believe that, that you don't sit down with the different groups and say, we need to kind of rework some of our deals. The deals that we have in place with our groups right now, they're, they're, they're under contract. You can't do anything about that. If, if, if they come back and say, for the best interest of the college, I mean, you know, the, the, the firefighters just went through it, the, the, the uh, public employees went through it, the county. I mean, everybody sat down and said, okay, well, we can't afford this, we can't afford this, how are we going to get through it? Um, I can't, you know, on this TV show or, or, or through you say, hey, Giles, this is, these are the methods because that's negotiating the union's contract. That is not only illegal, but that, that, that is micromanaging. I don't want to lay off. As I've said, I'm a job creator. So I think that there's other ways to do that. People have to read through and say, okay, well, how, if you're not going to lay off, you know, I mean, we all need to take a cut of some kind, cut back on, on the benefits. We have a very good benefit package, okay? We pick up 100% of the cost, but we can't take a 20% increase like we did this year, another $470,000, and just keep doing that every year. We can't do it. So eventually the trustees, again, getting back to one of your earlier questions, what is the role of trustee to hire the president superintendent to establish the policies by which they're going to run? And I think we need to send that, that message. We've said to the president and superintendent back in July, we, we adopted a, um, a, 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 um, a three-year balanced budget amendment. I, I call it a balanced budget amendment. We have to live by that. And we can't say that we want to do that and then fall short of not standing tall on issues that are politically sensitive but ensure our student success. We are there to educate students. The state of education, and I say this from a business standpoint, and I, and I don't have any problems with, with unions or collective bargaining or whatever, we spent a lot of money. So to set the story straight, we spent about $73,000 in Victorville, California, so that the business community, the taxpayers, the students had an advocate on that board. It is about change, and I know many of you have read that we are on probation or that our probation has been extended, and it has been. We will get through the accreditation process, I guarantee you. Um, it, it, it's going to be pretty tight. Right now, we're trying to get the final count. I believe that we're going to end up with about 12,000 students through this semester on out there. But then we, we, we end up getting funded by what we call FTES, it's full-time equivalent of students. And it's kind of a weird deal. So when you hear in the upcoming years that DVC, like other community colleges, have a structural deficit, they start off on day one, minute one, second one, with about a $3 million structural deficit. Now, I think I know how I can fix that. But I'm only one of five votes, and I have three people right now that probably don't agree with how I do a budget. We have 800 employees, so we're, we're a rather big employer. We have a budget of about $55 million. Our tuition now costs $46. And in the, last year, we put out 840, 849 associate degrees, 168 certificates of completion, and 1,017 degrees and certificates. I'm also one, and, 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 and again, when, when my very close friend, Diana Carloni, said to me, Joey, 
you're going to have a hard time in government because it doesn't work the way that you work or as fast as you work or as hyper as you work. And she was actually pretty right because I would expect as a trustee to sit down with your board and say, we need to have a 16% increase in graduation rates, transfer rates, and et cetera. And then you come to find out the reality. Part of, part of what we hear is community colleges are not, we're not a cure all end all, and that's true. But I still want to get BBC over the course of the next couple of years to kind of think like Apple does and Microsoft and big companies and Craig Garrett with him and, and many of the many of the leaders that we have in here today, you have a goal every single year of what you want to do. And I think that BBC needs to think that way and, and with your help we will hopefully get there. In 2004, 2008, our ASB received the Campus of the Year Award nationally from the American Student Association of Community Colleges in Washington, D.C. That's pretty cool. You know, that is really cool. The challenge is that most people, when you tell them that the ASB here is one of the most highly regarded ASBs in community colleges or university, they say, Joe, come on. I mean, you know, I'm in real estate, so we may exaggerate the square footage a little bit sometimes. Uh, this year, the Victor Valley College's 19-member team of the Model United Nations team won six top awards for outstanding delegation at the National Model United Nations Conference in New York City. Clap, that, that's huge. I mean, it just, again, the great things they do. The BBC has won nine times in 11 years for part, in participation since 2002, and in 2002, we received the outstanding delegation award. Our student nursing program is absolutely out of, out of the box, one of the most successful ones in the entire country. Um, Dr. Paul Williams, who's not with, with necessarily that, that department, he's here. Dr. Williams, where are you at? Would you please stand? He's one of our great uh, deans on out there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for this important support. Thank you for your support. Uh, but but we, have, we have the regional training center that is now fully open. And I don't know, how many of you have seen our $31 million facility out near Walmart? It is really stop by, walk in, ask for a quick tour. It is state of the art. It is, there's nothing on the West Coast, I think, as state of the art. It was built with your money and our taxes. We offer out there fire science, EMT, paramedic, and administrative uh, administration of justice and correction. This is about people like Christopher Dustin. Christopher, where are you at? Stand up. Christopher is the 2011-2012 ASB president, and I'm going to tell you how proud I am. He's now at Cal State San Bernardino. He changed his life around it. If you knew what he did before he went to, to, to BBC, you would say he could never have entered college, much less been at Cal State. Please give him a warm welcome and be a proud and, and, and Christopher is living proof of student success. If you call his voicemail, now, he's still doing stuff at BBC. He's down at Cal State. He's absolutely involved. Um, for those of you that go to Gala next year, I would buy your ticket. All three of the, of the major prizes that were won in this room on Saturday night at the BBC Gala, which was done by our great foundation, and we had 420 people in this room, were sold by Christopher Dustin. So, um, congratulations again. And I just want to thank each and every one of you. I wish that Deb could be here, and with that, we're going to conclude. And I just want to thank you, Jim. Thank you for the ball. Thank you.